The nebular hypothesis is the most widely accepted model to explain the formation and evolution of our solar system. Initially, it was applied only to our solar system, but now it serves as the basis for planet and solar system formation throughout the entire universe. The nebular hypothesis describes all of the steps or processes that took place to form our solar system and the planets in it. All of this started with a nebula or a massive and dense cloud of dust and gas, such as hydrogen. Now gravity caused this matter to begin to coalesce into clumps. According to Newton's universal law of gravitation, any two objects with mass will exert a gravitational force between them. And as we add more and more mass to this clump, it will exert a greater and greater gravitational force on other objects and be able to pull them to itself, thereby making this clump larger and larger. Our solar system started as a nebula of gas, but through the force of gravity, it was able to create clumps of matter throughout it. And there began to be one central clump in our solar system, which would later become the sun. Around this central clump was what's called an accretion disk. This is where all of the other matter in this nebula began to flatten out and began to orbit around this central clump. Now all of this mass in the accretion disk continues to feed this central clump with more and more matter. And this continues until it has enough mass to become a protostar. Now proto in protostar means first or earliest form of. So this is the beginning of a sun in our solar system. Now this protostar at the center of this accretion disk will eventually get enough mass to begin the process of fusion, which then it becomes an actual star. For a star like our sun, this process takes about one million years to complete. And through this process, the accretion disk continues to orbit the protostar and the new sun and continues to flatten out as well. As the sun in the center of our solar system begins this fusion process, it becomes what's known as a main sequence star. Now to explain this, we're going to look at what's called the HR diagram. HR stands for Hertzsprung-Russell, which is the name of two people who developed this model. The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is a scatter plot of all of the different types of stars. And on its axis it shows the luminosity or the absolute magnitude of stars and the temperature of stars in Kelvin. This model is used to display the evolution and classification of stars and it shows all of the different types of stars on it. Main sequence stars, white dwarfs, giants, and supergiants are just some of the stars that are identified on this HR diagram. Main sequence stars are what would most likely be considered normal stars. These are stars that are like our sun and are going through the normal process of a star. They have a balance between the thermal force pushing out on the star and the gravitational collapse pulling down into the star. Other stars on this HR diagram are in different stages of their life. Now generally all stars pass through this main sequence phase, but how much time they spend on it is largely dependent upon how much mass they have. Where large mass stars will generally burn through their fuel more quickly and move more quickly through the main sequence. Whereas smaller mass stars burn through their fuel more slowly and will spend more time in this main sequence. Now this balance between the thermal pressure pushing outward and the gravitational collapse pulling in is known as hydrostatic equilibrium. And main sequence stars are identified in this way because of this balance. At the same time that this protostar is becoming a main sequence star, there are also planetesimals or the beginnings of planets forming in the accretion disk. Now this process of planet formation in the accretion disk can take between 10 million and 100 million years. The force of gravity is very active in the accretion disk at this time as well. Just as it pulled mass into the central clump or to the protostar, it's also responsible for pulling clumps together in the accretion disk. Now as these clumps in the accretion disk continue to grow, they eventually become classified as planetesimals. Planetesimals are kilometer-sized objects orbiting the central star. Now these planetesimals will continue to pull more and more mass towards them until they become about moon-sized or Mars-sized objects. And these are known as planet embryos. This process can take between 100,000 and 300,000 years. The planetesimals and planet embryos closest to the sun generally collide with each other very violently. And this process leads to typically terrestrial planets, such as the four inner planets in our solar system. Now the time for this process can vary greatly, anywhere from between 100 million years all the way up to 1 billion years. Planetesimals and planet embryos farther away from the sun typically form into gas giants, 
like the outer planets in our solar system. These planets typically have masses much greater than Earth's, which allows them to trap the lighter elements such as hydrogen and helium that the inner planets are not able to trap. Now that gas that's surrounding the inner planets typically gets pulled into the central star. The largest gas planets, those with masses about 30 times more than Earth, like Jupiter and Saturn, can form very quickly in this process and can very quickly pull all of the gases in the accretion disk around their central mass. But these larger gas planets can form in as little as 10,000 years. Smaller gas planets such as Uranus and Neptune typically take longer to form and are thought to have started after planets like Jupiter and Saturn. So there is not as much mass left around for them to gather up and that makes them be smaller. All of these processes described in the nebular hypothesis took place in our solar system to form it in the way that it is now. And as was stated earlier, it's thought that these processes explain the formation of solar systems and planets throughout the entire universe. And as we saw, Newton's universal law of gravitation plays a key and important role in the formation of stars, planets, and solar systems.